Hey, Godfox here. Today's review is Marcel Darius' Final Edition 98 overall. This is a review of a boring player, but I will not neglect the line because big men need love too. And that's today's sponsor. Big love. Watch every episode on HBO Go. Stick around to the end. I think I found the problem with strong power and pulling plays and why they are so powerful. Marcel Darius was born in Birmingham, Alabama on March 13, 1990. He attended high school in Birmingham at Huffman High School. Go Green and Orange Vikings. He went on to play football for the Alabama Crimson Tide, where he was BCS National Championship Defensive MVP after leaving the Crimson Tide to a 37-21 roll over the Texas Longhorns. Darius was drafted third overall in 2011 NFL Draft. He has had a very productive career and had 10 sacks in 2014, leading the league for a defensive tackle. He was a first-team All-Pro in 2014 and named as the 53rd best player in the NFL in 2015 by his colleagues. He is suspended for first game of 2015 season due to possession of a controlled substance and drug paraphernalia. On to his in-game stats. He's 6'3", 331 pounds, 82 speed with 93 acceleration, makes him only 3 speed, 1 acceleration behind honors J.J. Watt. Very good stats for an interior defensive lineman. 78 agility and 78 jump. So don't expect him to swap many balls like I swap my friends with prank phone calls. 99 strength, basically a minimum for a defensive tackle right now. 98 block shed, needed to fight off double teams and blocking in the middle. 98 is amazing, but every defensive tackle has it. 99 power move, again great, but what is great when every defensive tackle now has a 97 power move plus? Those three last ones were the most important stats for a run stuffer, and Darius has it. He works as your number one defensive tackle in a 3-4, and defensive tackle number two in a 4-3. That's because in a 3-4 there is only one defensive tackle playing, and he has to be big bodied run stuffer. In a 4-3 in Madden, the second defensive tackle is the one that lines up in the one gap, which is between the center and the guard, and will be double teamed. So you need a big strong guy to hold those double teams to allow your linebackers to make plays. He's as good in a 4-3 as he is in a 3-4. Not specialized in either one, but can perform equally no matter your scheme. His intelligence stats, he's got 88 play rec and 85 awareness. This is where he suffers in comparison to a lot of other upper tier defensive tackles. He won't be snuffing out as many screen plays as players like Vince Wilfork, John Randall, or Mean Joe Green. But I will say, he will get a majority of them. He won't reliably get every screen play like you can rely on Wilfork to do. And luckily, when he does recognize screen, he has a stats to chase it down, unlike Will Ford, who sometimes just misses out due to speed. And even if he misses the screen recognition, his acceleration has him get into the quarterback quickly to potentially not allow them to release the ball. I studied about five of his games specifically looking at how he did in the run and pass game. He routinely got handled in the run game, getting pushed back by centers like Corey Lindsay, and the only double teams he commanded were those that lasted half a second before they went to the second level. He got pushed back as frequently as he did the pushing. He was effectively neutralized by Ultimate Legend players, making your defense almost entirely reliant on linebackers to make plays. After studying the game tape on him, I came away disappointed, but there isn't much to upgrade from him. A few players with slightly better strength or speed, but I don't know how much they'll matter. His block shot often came too late to make a play on a ball carrier. He never got off a pass block, 99 power move means nothing it seems. He doesn't get that collapsing two-man animation as often as you'd like. I don't know what the other upper tier defensive tackles are like, i.e. Indomitian Sue Boss and his ultimate legend and Vince Wilfork's movers, so I can't give a reliable comparison there. But I believe defensive tackle is one of the areas I'd say you can cheap out on a little and play 92 Vince Wilfork, 93 Steven Paella, or 96 Dontari Poe and get very similar production. Overall, for on the field production to price, I'm giving this card a C. He can't pass rush and doesn't do his main job of defending the run very well. Many of the defensive tackles are basically the same and perform similarly. And as a final note, after watching defensive tackle play extensively, I found the problem with strong power and some pulling plays in general. So take a look at these next couple plays. They are all strong power. The defensive tackle on the backside always gets engaged with the tackle on the backside like it's Christmas time and you've been dating a girl for four years. So if the defensive tackle is in a one technique, which is between the center and the guard, and the guard pulls, the center should block down, allowing the middle linebacker to run to the play. Then the backside tackle either takes his end or tries to reach the outside linebacker. In Madden, the offensive tackle glitches the AI and gets the defensive tackle to lock onto it a couple gaps over. The center then gets to a middle linebacker, potentially causing the other outside linebacker to be cut off in traffic. Watch it again in this next play as the offensive tackle is able to stretch to the defensive tackle in the center guard 
gap to make it there and again in slow motion that should not happen and does not happen in real life I would really like EA to fix the run game with the lessening of the suction tackle next year I hope the run game doesn't get overpowered I really pray there are run game improvements in Madden 16 thanks for watching please subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow